In this video I want to demonstrate how I use uh, assembly2 workbench and the animation workbench to get something like this animation. Um, let's start. Uh, we have three objects, the base object, then we have a rotator and a moving object and the first step is to assembly these objects. We start to bring the rotator to the base. So we select the inner side of the hull and the cylinder and make uh, this axial constraint. The next one what we need is we want to put the rotator on top of the base. So and Okay, then we assembly this one. That means we put on the bottom of the base this part, this face. We align this two faces and the next one are these two. So here we need some offset for the last constraint. Uh, I have tested it, I think it's 35. Okay. And now it's in the right position. And the next what we want to do, we want to enable the mover to move into this direction. So we deactivate this constraint. And I have uh, done some modification of the assembly to workbench. So if I deactivate a constraint, then it is not used in the solver and it is not used to, def to find the degrees of freedom. When I now start the animation of degrees of freedom, I have two freedoms. The first is I can rotate the rotator. And I can move this one. Okay. And the second modification is if I use this tool to demonstrate the degrees of freedom, I generate two objects of the animation workbench, uh, which can be used to animate the degrees of freedom in a more configurable way. These are two placer objects and now I show the first one. You see this is the rotation. There is still some small bug in it because I need to have the center of rotation here inside and the coordinates are 50 and 15. So this hack can be done with the script too. I think it's not the big problem. And here we have the second one. This is the mover. So, and we have to change this a little bit too. So what we see is it goes too fast in this direction.
So I change this. Okay, I think this is good enough. Okay, and then I can change this values too. So. Okay, the next step, what I do is I want to have first the movement of this part so I change to the animation workbench and create a speeder this is the speeder for DOF1 I select here the DOF1 object and I say uh, I want to change the time and I want to have 200 time minus 1.5 uh, 200 time if time is less than 0.5 and else I want to have a constant value 100. So what does it mean? I have first a rotation and then the rotation stops. So only a movement in the first half of the animation and I repeat the same thing for DOF0 and in this case I change the formula I say first I want to have 0 if time is less than 1.5 and else I want 200 time minus 0 0.5 so this value will run from 0 to 100 in the second half of the animation okay and now I see there I have a complete rotation I don't want it, I only want uh, a half rotation, so I set it down to 100. Okay. Okay, last step is I put both together, so I create a manager. I insert the two speeder into the manager. I activate them and run the manager. So this is the first motion and this is the second one. It's still not a realistic uh, animation because we have here some collisions but uh, the demo should show how I can use assembly workbench to 
create such uh, objects for animation of the degrees of freedom and how to get them played in a time sequence using the speeder with a formula like this and opposite like this.